The Wellness Hour, an in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, weight loss surgery. With us, we have an expert on the topic, Dr. Julie Elner. Dr. Elner, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, before we get into today's topic, tell us a little bit about your practice in San Diego. I have two locations. My office, the primary office is located near Alvarado Hospital, but okay. I also practice out of La Jolla. I've been practicing in San Diego for 11 years now, and I've had my own private practice for about the last five years. So all you do is weight loss surgery? That's right. Is that right? And, and uh, so who is the typical patient that you see, if there is a typical My My patients largely fall into two categories. There's the patient who has been struggling with their weight their entire life. They've never really known what life is like at a normal weight. So heavy their whole life. Okay. That's absolutely right. Then there's the second category of patients. Most of the time, it's a woman who has been very fit, very healthy through the majority of her life. Then after college, she gets married, has a couple of children, and she continues to gain weight through her 40s. It's typically after baby weight, and it just becomes unmanageable for her later on in life. Interesting. Now, your background, you know, we talked on the phone before, you know, before we met, and, uh, you know, I looked at, online at your video, and, and I thought, you know, what does a, a, a thin woman know about weight loss? Just another thin doctor telling overweight people how to lose weight. Uh, and, uh, and obviously, I didn't read your bio at that time. So tell us about your background. I mean, small town, family of uh, obese Patients, according to your website, That's right. elaborate on that. That's right. Patients ask me all the time, what does a skinny chick like you know about being obese? And that's a good question. The reason I got into this business is because my mother and I are the only ones in my family who don't suffer from morbid obesity. Okay. As I was growing up, my grandparents were always obese. I lost my grandparents at a very early age for me because they were obese. They all died of obesity-related really? diseases. Really? Absolutely. My aunts, uncles, cousins all suffer from obesity, and I've never known my father to be thin and healthy and happy with his weight. So this is something that I've seen in my own family. I've seen my own family be devastated by obesity, and everyone in my family dies of obesity. That's why I got into this. I understand you don't believe that it's just exercise more and eat less that there may be a genetic problem that's causing people to be 100 pounds overweight, 150 pounds overweight. There absolutely is a genetic problem going on. The diets have been proven repeatedly for decades not to work for the morbidly obese patient. And there's a difference between being morbidly obese and just being a little bit overweight. What defines it? Morbid obesity is defined as a body mass index of 35, which takes into account your height and your weight, so depending on your height, morbid obesity, being a BMI of 35, is going to hit generally the 80 to 90 pound overweight mark. That's when it's appropriate for people to have surgery because we know that there's a 97% failure rate on all non-surgical therapies. Meaning they're going to die if they get it. That's surgery. absolutely right. So that's right. the morbid part. Morbid obesity. Morbid means It's going to kill them. That's gonna exactly right. Now this is interesting. You say that the people that come in, the patients that come in, underestimate how much they have to lose. That's true. Is that right? I, I, I mean, think give me an example, for example. One of, one of the problems is that, and this goes for many of my patients, that the weight has crept on pound by pound, sometimes over decades. And at one point, a patient wakes up in the morning and says, gosh, I can't even stand up comfortably. I can't walk comfortably. I can't breathe that's when they realize that they really have a medical problem and it's interfering with every minute of their day. Do you think people wait too long? Do they wait too long? I think many people I mean, they put wait it off. too long. Many people wait too long from a medical perspective. They decide to have surgery once they are already suffering from severe hypertension, heart disease, sleep apnea, diabetes. And the one regret that almost all the patients have is that they didn't do it 20 years before. Really? Absolutely. That's really? the one regret that all of my patients have. Now, I have a lot of questions about uh, the difference between lap band, who's a can great candidate for lap band, and who is better for, what was it called, gastric bypass? Gastric bypass. All right. Uh, but, but, but first, you say you're changing people's lives. That's what, right. should, what do people need to know about this surgery and what happens after? Surgery? There, there are a couple of different ways to approach this. 
most people decide to have surgery because they're so uncomfortable, because they have pain, they can't breathe, and they're on a list of 20 or more medications. So initially, people want to have surgery because they want to get off of their medications. They realize that their life expectancy is 15 to 20 years less. They just want to breathe. Being obese. They have, right, they have very medical concerns, day-to-day -day medical concerns. But what they don't understand is that when they have the surgery and all those problems go away, then their priorities switch. Really? How so? Absolutely. They become not obsessed with food. One of the things that patients describe to me is that having this surgery releases them and gives them freedom from this looming obsession with food all the time. Like every day a new diet? Absolutely, absolutely. Is that right? They tell it's, you this. What, what's very interesting to me is that many patients say to me, when I wake up in the morning, my brain has already been thinking about breakfast and how am I going to be sure that I have food available all day long. When they go to bed at night, their brain is thinking about how am I going to have food the next day. Is that right? And having the surgery decreases your hormonal drive for food, so the brain doesn't obsess about it. So the priorities interesting. shift. And patients stop obsessing about food, and so they can enjoy the other things in life. Kind of like thin has, people that don't exactly, have to think about it. Exactly. Right. My okay. my patients can't understand how enjoyable exercise can actually be because it's always been cumbersome and painful. So patients lose the weight, and then they realize that what the thin, healthy, active people have been saying all along is that exercise is really fun. So they're getting to experience the enjoyment of the normal things that day-to-day -day people enjoy every day of their lives. And that wasn't even on their radar before. Now the goals change, you say. You know, they start out just wanting to breathe, and all of a sudden they, their goals become bigger. That's exactly right. They, be, they become more refined. The, the most common reason why people have surgery is that they want to live without pain and they want to breathe. A great story is a patient of mine from Alaska who caribou hunts with her husband and she realized that she needed to have surgery one day when she couldn't carry her own caribou back to the truck and she said right. that's it I can't live the life that I want to live so I have to have this surgery because my knees and hips wouldn't allow me to carry the caribou Months later, she was talking to me about ordering fancy underwear from Victoria's Secret because she wasn't even worrying about carrying the caribou anymore. That was no problem for her. Now her priorities have shifted. She's buying fancy dresses. She's buying fancy How much weight? Underwear. How much weight did she lose? Oh, she lost well over 100 pounds. So they lose 100 pounds? Mm -hmm. Easily. I mean, easily. 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 Is the first 100 the, the easy part? The first 100... Did they tell you that, I should say? The, the first year is, is the easiest part for a gastric bypass patient. That's when the hunger hormones have decreased. People have no interest in food. The obsession with food is gone. The metabolism is going through the roof. They have more energy than they ever have. I've had patients put additions on their houses because they have so much energy and the neighbors are complaining about the, the noise early in the morning from putting the addition on the house because they only need maybe five or six hours of sleep now. So their energy goes through the roof and the priority... So energy is, is dramatically different. So they lose 100 pounds. Uh, mm -hmm. Now they're maybe exercising, running, going to the gym. Uh, do you think exactly. there's a... I mean, obviously there's a prejudice against people overweight. Tough economy. Mm -hmm. uh, all things being equal. Uh, who do you hire? The person that looked looks, you know, with all things being equal, the person that has the most energy. Absolutely. So I mean, what is your experience here? Well, my experience is a little bit different because I'm looking at it from a different angle. What do you hear is what, what I mean but, about people being judged and not getting the job but or whatever. I, I, I absolutely know that the research shows that people who are obese are treated and appear statistically like minorities. We know that women aren't paid the same amount of money as men in the similar job. But we also know that obese people aren't hired with the same uh, criteria, they aren't promoted, they aren't given the same salaries overall. A great example is a young lady of mine, a patient uh, by the name of Megan, whose mother had gone through surgery with me and, and found that her life had drastically changed. She wanted the same changes for her daughter. So a few weeks after her own surgery, she brought her daughter in. But her daughter was trying to get into cosmetology school and was applying for a job as the shampoo girl in the salon okay. and was flat out turned away because she was too fat. She was devastated. She came into me, told me this 
very heartbreaking story about how she was turned down because of her size. She had the surgery and months later went back and applied in the same place. They didn't recognize inter- her? Interviewed with the same lady. She didn't recognize her. And she was hired on the spot with absolutely no wow. change in her experience, in her ability to do the job. The only thing that had changed was her body size. And, uh, well, there's no doubt about it. And, and, and she will be a better employee and a better worker. That's exactly with, right. With the she won't have the, the back pain. She won't have the lack of something, energy. In the something fatigue. you brought up. Uh, you say they come on with a bunch of medications. I mean, these are sick people, 100, 150 pounds overweight. Mm-hmm. Do a lot of these people think, you know, I'm on too many medications? Do they self-diagnose and say, I'm not a good candidate for either, you know, lap banding or what are the others? I mean, I mean, do you think there's a lot of that going on? And what do you want to tell those people that are watching this? People fear that their medical problems would be an impediment to them having surgery. They say, oh, I have a heart condition, or I have to take asthma medication, or I'm diabetic, therefore I'm too sick to have the surgery. Those are all reasons to have the surgery. Wow. Patients are referred to me by cardiologists. Can somebody argue this, that, well, she may be an overstatement? about these things? I mean, those are the reasons? Not at all. Those are absolutely the reasons to have the surgery because gastric bypass surgery specifically makes hypertension and diabetes go away and 90% of people within 48 hours before the patient leaves the hospital, they're off of all of their medication. Now, FenFen. Now, when FenFen was on the market, I had a circle of friends that were, that shrunk down and when it went away, they blew back up. They, uh, but they were eating cookies, and they were eating, uh, you know, instead of eating, you know, t- uh, ten cookies, one cookie, and they right. were sad. That they was their lunch. Changing their lifestyle. Yeah. So what what part do you have? What role do you play in getting these people on the right track? New I, habits. I play a huge role in teaching my patients, and that's one of the things that patients should be looking for if they're going to be an informed consumer when they're choosing a program or choosing a surgeon to perform this surgery. They have to realize that. Having an operation is like having a tool installed. They have to rely on the surgeon to teach them how to use the tool to help them change their behaviors so they can establish good exercise behaviors, good eating behaviors that will last them for the rest of their life. Something that's going to be realistic, not like a starvation diet or a liquid diet that that no one can stay on emotionally or from a health standpoint. Insurance covers this. That's exactly right. then if you see somebody 100 pounds overweight, 150 pounds overweight, but they're not doing it, what are they afraid of? And, and what, what misconception is there that you'd like to lay to rest right now? I think people are afraid of change. Okay. People are surprisingly afraid of how is it going to feel if I'm thin. And that's typically, really? that's typically the person they who... They could be afraid of that? Absolutely. Really? That's typically the person who has never experienced what it's like to be thin and healthy. Interesting. Okay. They're, they're, they're afraid of the change. They tell you this. Absolutely. They say, I don't know what... Absolutely. Wow. I have never known myself to be thin. I don't know if I'm going to recognize myself when I'm thin. I mean, do they get new relationships? Do they, do they come back with stories about, hey, I'm engaged or... Absolutely. Things like that. Really? Absolutely. I, I have patients, uh, one, one young lady named Jody who lives in Alpine, who came to me, 26 years old, diagnosed with hypertension. She was infertile because of polycystic ovarian syndrome. She had sleep apnea. She had asthma. She was in a bad marriage, but she had such low self-esteem, chronic fatigue. She was stuck. She was absolutely stuck where she was. She came to me and had the gastric bypass surgery. Within six months, she had kicked her husband, abusive husband, to the curb. She got a new job. She had more energy than ever. She got into a... It's like getting your life back. You, know, you hear that back. cliche, but, right. but in this case... She got into a great is. relationship, and now she has two children. She's over her infertility. She has a man who treats her like a queen, and she's happy as a clam. You know, in the, uh, you know we've all seen the celebrity that, that gets in the fat suit. That's right. And they're so surprised. They can't get a cab. They're shocked. They can't get directions. Mm-hmm. You know, where is this? Mm-hmm. And then they take off their fat suit, mm-hmm. and, you know... Everybody comes from all over the place to help them get directions. That comes up at our support group all the time. Really? There's actually a a short window period that people experience after the surgery when they suddenly realize how differently they're being treated now, that people are nicer now, people are more courteous now, they get better. Can there be anger associated with that? And and that's right. They go through a brief period of 
bitterness wow. thinking I'm the same person on the inside I have the same good heart I'm the same good worker I'm the same loyal wonderful per person that I was before why do I suddenly now get different treatment because I'm in a different body interesting mm -hmm. and uh, so what are the frequently asked questions I mean what do they want to know they come in they've already decided they're gonna get a surgery but what do they want to know they want to know what's the downtime Am I going to hurt? What's the pain like after surgery? And people are almost always shocked to know how little discomfort there is that's associated with laparoscopic surgery. The way patients describe it after surgery is that they feel like they did a lot of sit-ups. They feel like they have been to the gym and their muscles are a little bit sore. But everyone is surprised at how little pain is actually really? involved with having this sort of surgery. Is this done in a hospital setting in your hands? With a gastric bypass, it's always performed as an inpatient operation. People stay two days. With the lap banding or the gastric banding, people can sometimes get those done as outpatients so they can leave the same day and those may be performed in a if surgery If somebody wants center. to know, okay, am I a candidate for the lap band? You know, I, I'm confused about this topic because I thought, you know, wow, the lap band's great, but then gastric bypass is great. If they want to know more about that, because that's a big question. Uh -huh. How to decide. They go to you on a consult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, is that what you recommend, or do you do public seminars? I, I have a, a few different ways that patients can obtain information. Most patients don't want to be confronted with a surgeon until they've gathered some information. So most patients will take a look at my website first. There's a lot of information there. They become a little bit more knowledgeable. They have a few questions. So they'll come to me in either a, a direct face-to-face -face consultation or they'll come to an informational seminar, which lasts an hour and a half to two hours. It's a very informational seminar. That's where people really can put it together. We, we have videos and pictures to tell people about the different sorts of surgeries and help them understand the differences between the surgeries. Both surgeries can be good for many people, okay. but sometimes there are specific reasons why a patient would choose one operation or another. And you walk them through that process. Exactly. Or you help exactly. decide for them. The tell surgery. me this, tell me this. Um, I mean, you say there's a fat gene, mm -hmm. right? But what, and I have to ask you about that, but what are the age ranges of people that are coming in to do this? There's in actually, your practice. In, in my practice, I operate on people at the lowest age of 18, but my oldest patient was 73. 73, wow. Mm -hmm. But if you had to say average, I mean, are they 40 plus, 50 plus? What yeah, is it? The average patient is 35 to 55. And, and all of them you think are waiting too long. I mean, they not, have, not all of they them. They might have a five years worth of miserable life when they could just do it a little early. I mean, it's right. worth a consultation. Right. Right. Who would you like to see more of? I mean, is there a specific group of patients? Would you like to see more men? Would you like to see more younger people? I would like to see more patients in their 20s because those patients are still relatively healthy in terms of not having a list of 20 different medications. They're just getting into the uh, social scene where they're finding a spouse, they're getting married, they're getting into the workforce, and their health and, quite honestly, their body size impacts all those things in a negative way. So it's not so much weight. I mean, you could be 70 pounds, 60 pounds, or you could be 200 pounds if you're short enough. That's right. To get this procedure. That's right. That's why it comes down to the BMI, which incorporates the weight and the 35 height. 35 percent seems pretty low. It's, it's a BMI, a body mass index of 35. Yeah. So a five foot. But a lot person. of people fall into that. Absolutely. Nowadays. Absolutely. So We're it is operating. healthy. It's healthier Absolutely. than being overweight. The downtime is very low. How soon could somebody go back to work? A week. Really? With either surgery. What about the perfect scenario? What have you heard? How soon do they go back to work? Even though maybe oh, they're I've not had patients to. go back to work five days after their surgery. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. And they're eating again. They're feeling good. But the main thing is they've got a they they get a second chance actually. Right? That's absolutely right. With better habits. That's right. That's right. That's what patients, I think, can't conceptualize before surgery. Most of them are in this for medical reasons, but what they don't see just on the horizon is how much their life will change, how they will be treated differently. How Construction they will... workers whistle at them? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, I had Sorry to say that. there was a nurse who used to work in my office who had the surgery, and she used to, to counsel patients about this. And she used to say, it's so much nicer to be whistled at than laughed at. Wow. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it she does walked make that a, walk a, every day. A, I guess a big difference. 
So stories, life changing. All that. I mean, do they keep in touch with you? I mean, a year Absolutely. later. Absolutely. Do they say, "Oh my goodness"? Do they say Absolutely. vacation pictures. Absolutely. They I, really do. I get wonderful pictures in my inbox and in my in my email all the time from patients. Oh, like I, I have one patient, Norm, who's a uh, retired RVer, and he and his wife don't even have a home. They just RV all over Canada and the United nice. States. And Norm has lost over 200 pounds. He wasn't even comfortable traveling in his RV because of his weight. He uh, was very limited in terms of the sorts of things that he could do when they would get to destinations. But now I get pictures of Norm bear hunting in Alaska, skydiving, wow. scuba diving, um, all over crazy tourist destinations. He's climbing mountains. He's an amazing person, interesting. but you, he sends me pictures all the time, and I get those sorts of things. I get wedding invitations from my patients now because really? because they're they're getting married and they're finding relationships, baby pictures because the patients were infertile before surgery. Patients have a real connection with me. Depression can that right. go away? I mean, absolutely. To, because I guess if you're 100 pounds overweight, absolutely. it's depressing. Absolutely, absolutely. If you're at a normal weight, there's a 20-25% chance that at some point in your life you'll experience a depressive episode. But if you're morbidly obese, the risk of depression is 89%. It really? jumps from 20-25 to 25 to 89%. And three-quarters of my patients who come into me for surgery are on antidepressant medications. Do you have people weaning off or getting off Absolutely. Completely? The majority of people who come into me having surgery who are on antidepressant medications are generally on those medications because of their self-esteem issues with respect to their weight. So the great majority of people wean right off of those medications, certainly under the, the uh, watchful eye of myself and their primary care physicians, but the great majority of people go off their antidepressant medications okay. because they don't need them anymore. Interesting, interesting. And the first year, about how much do they lose on average? At least 100 pounds. 100 pounds. Yeah. And uh, and they start exercise. Do they run marathons? I mean, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm going over this, but I'm surprised. You know, something I'm picking up. They do on, run marathons. You know, you know, I invited you on the program. I called you and said, I, you know, I think this is a hot topic. But one of the things that 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 I'm really, I, I guess, uh, coming. I don't even know what the expression is, but but enlightened to is the fact that it allows people to get do the things that they want to do. That's right. The things that we all take for granted, like That's exactly even right. walking in Costco or That's getting in right. and out of a car. What thin people take for granted is what obese people struggle with every single day. And they're not going to talk about it. I guess, you know, I'm thinking, as I was sitting here, I don't hear overweight people complaining there because they, mm -hmm. this is their little secret. That's, and it's also their life. It's just, it's just the cross that they bear. They can't go to the bathroom in an airline and they haven't gone to the bathroom in an airplane in their entire adult life. Point, it's part okay. of their life to not be able to travel on long airline trips because they can't use the bathroom. I had a neighbor uh, in, in Palm Desert and uh, he was telling me he was going to go in for the surgery. I, I don't know the follow-up story, but he was saying, you know, you know, he had this wife and he said, you know, she just wants her husband back. And he mm -hmm. said, like, when we go to spas, I can't even get a massage. That's right. And... Uh, that's right. It was interesting. You know, just that was important to him. He just wanted, because he had a lot of money, very successful, retired at a young mm -hmm. age, mm -hmm. but couldn't partake in all the things that he used to do. Right. He said he gained 100 pounds in like 15 years. Right. That's exactly right. So he may be someone who enjoyed those things, and now they've been taken away, but many of my patients can only imagine what it would be like to get a massage, can only imagine what it would be like to have the confidence to get a massage. Forget wow. about whether wow. or not okay. the table would hold them or not. They can't imagine having the confidence. His was comfort. Uh, comfort. He said he just didn't mm -hmm. feel comfortable doing it. Right. It wasn't that the table wouldn't hold him up. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wow. the other issue, a table and chairs. When people walk into restaurants or go to uh, family and friends' homes, the obese person is thinking about the steps to get into the house, are the chairs going to be um, stable enough? I've had patients who sit down on the chair at the dinner table in a friend's house and the, and the chair collapses underneath them. They worry about whether the chairs are going to have arms on because are they going to be able to fit in or are they going so to be crammed in? So this is your in? cause. I mean, this is your passion now. Absolutely. Did you go into it knowing you were going to love it this much? I didn't. I went into this because... My family was obese, and I was looking at it from a medical aspect, thinking... To save like, their lives. Like so many other doctors, I want to get out there and save lives. But what I didn't realize 
was that this operation and the follow-up care not only saves lives, but it changes lives. And it was only wow. a few months into my practice when patients started coming to me, having lost the weight, crying and hugging me and holding me in the office saying, you saved my life wow. and I'm bringing you, my you daughter to you. This is wonderful. Do this you, is the most do they, rewarding surgery. Do they break down sometimes Absolutely. on the consult? Absolutely. They just fall apart. Absolutely. Like it's finally going to happen. They have a chance. Absolutely. I, Are they still in happy, disbelief, by Happy way? tears. Are they in disbelief sometimes? Or they, go, they are. They just are. like all the failed diets, they still think, I don't know. They are. People are afraid sometimes to, to make the leap to have surgery because they feel like that's their last option. And what if they fail just like every other diet has failed? That's probably the biggest fear for people is just the fear that the last option won't work. Okay. You know, the, uh, uh, you have this tremendous amount of uh, empathy or understanding of overweight people. You don't prejudge them. You say there's a fat gene. I guess they have to go on your website for that because we're out of time. But, uh, and, and you're the family of obese people, mm -hmm. father's obese. Um, final message to, uh, would you say there are a million, millions, 10 million people that are candidates for this surgery Absolutely. that could qualify insurance that are doing nothing? Absolutely. So message to them, final message. The final message to them would be have the courage to hope for something that you perhaps think is out of your reach. And maybe the first thing is just to talk to someone who's had the surgery. Don't be afraid to talk to someone who has had the surgery because I can almost guarantee you that person is going to say, my only regret is that I didn't do this when I was 20 years old. Just look into it and explore the options because it will extend the life, but it also changes your life. Well, I want to thank you again for coming on the show. Very interesting. You've been watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this interview again or direct a friend to it, you can go to our website at wellnesshour.com, and uh, we'll give you a link to put it on your website as well. So I want to thank you again. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.